Since James Bond's debut on the big screen with 1962's Dr. No, the character has been played by a variety of different actors. While original actor Sean Connery arguably remains the most iconic, each subsequent Bond actor has had his share of fans. However, each actor has also had his reasons for leaving the franchise, or for being booted from it. Join Facts First as we explore the reason each James Bond actor quit the franchise. The character of James Bond first debuted on the big screen with 1962's Dr. No. The film took its inspiration from the Ian Fleming novel of the same name, which featured the character of the extraordinary English spy James Bond, brandishing unlimited sex appeal and a license to kill. That first film was produced on a budget of barely over a million dollars, and it went on to make nearly 60 million at the box office. Not only did the film make the character of James Bond a household name, but it also popularized Sean Connery like never before. The actor had been relatively unknown until the point of being offered the role, which is part of why the film's small budget allowed for him. Sean Connery starred in seven films as James Bond before officially retiring from the role, and still stands as the first person most people think of when they think of the character. Despite the fact that subsequent Bond actors have all brought something unique to the table, few have epitomized the literary creation quite as well as Sean. But at some point, it came time for Sean, after a long period of gradual disenchantment, to leave his role in the franchise. Given that Dr. No had made him a star, Sean was quite happy with his gig as James Bond for the first several years. However, problems started visibly surfacing in the actor's demeanor while the fourth feature was being filmed. That fourth outing was 1965's Thunderball, which was the most exuberant and expensive of the James Bond films up until that point. During publicity for the film, Sean could be heard saying some things that hinted at him not being too keen to play the character much longer. But there were two more films remaining in his contract. After Sean's attitude towards playing the Bond character began to sour, the relationship between the actor and the producers of the franchise soured along with it. By the time the fifth feature was filming, producer Albert R. Broccoli had just about had enough of Sean. The fifth James Bond feature was You Only Live Twice, and Sean's feelings towards the Bond character only got more complicated when it came time for the actor to promote the film in Japan. The character of James Bond had become incredibly popular in Japan, and Sean was perhaps a bigger celebrity there than anywhere else. While promoting it, Sean was stalked by an obsessive fan who followed the actor into a public bathroom and pleaded with him for pictures. And fans of all sorts mobbed Sean, and the whole thing was a very negative experience for the actor. It was this trip that resulted in Sean demanding Albert give him an exuberant pay increase, something he wasn't too keen on doing. When Sean was denied the pay increase, his time playing the James Bond character was seemingly over. However, he subsequently played the character two more times, in both an official and unofficial film featuring the character and made by other producers. The first person brought on to replace Sean was George Lazenby. He debuted as James Bond in 1969 with On Her Majesty's Secret Service. The film has since gone down as one of the most popular of the Bond films, which has allowed George to stand alongside the other Bond actors in the eyes of fans despite his turn in the film being both his first and last. George was unhappy during the production of the film and didn't get along with the rest of cast and crew. Despite the fact that he didn't seem like an ideal fit, he was apparently offered a seven-film contract comparable to what Sean had signed. However, he turned it down. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. When it was clear George Lazenby wasn't going to be returning for a second turn, Albert and Harry offered Sean the chance to come back to reprise his role. He did so in 1971's Diamonds Are Forever, but that proved to be Sean's last official Bond outing. Still, he did come back to play James Bond in an unofficial capacity with 1983's Never Say Never Again. Though a different studio and other producers made the film, it has achieved cult status due to it being an outlier in the franchise. In 1973, Roger Moore took over the role, and ended up occupying that character until 1985. While audiences had gotten used to Sean Connery as the character, they were quick to accept Roger. Roger had a charm all his own and there are many who consider him to be the best Bond in the franchise. Roger loved playing Bond, but ended up calling it quits when he felt he was getting too old in the face. His body could still perform the actions, but he felt somewhat ridiculous romancing young vixens on screen when he started looking wrinkled and gray in his late 50s. 
Roger gave up the role of James Bond amicably and was replaced by Timothy Dalton. Timothy performed in the role until License to Kill, which was the 16th official James Bond film. The actor was supposed to come back for one more, but things fell through with the producers, and the 17th film was put on hold for several years. Production was supposed to start in 1990, but it didn't start until much later, and by that time, Timothy's contract had expired. The actor was no longer interested in playing the character, and the studio needed someone new. Pierce Brosnan was brought on to revitalize the franchise with GoldenEye, and the film proved a massive success. After the massive gap between GoldenEye's release and Timothy Dalton's last outing, the public was ready for more James Bond. The film offered more intense action and better special effects than the franchise had seen up until that point, though now many look back on the Pierce Brosnan Bond films as being the corniest of the lot. Pierce ended up going out with a bang, as his last performance as James Bond was in the character's highest-grossing film to that point, 2003's Die Another Day. Like Sean Connery before him, Pierce was becoming disenchanted with the character and felt that continuing to act in the franchise would be worthwhile only if he could get a significant pay increase. Once again, Albert turned the actor down, deciding it was time to reinvent the franchise with a new look. Not only did the producers want to give the series a stylish makeover in terms of the way the action and story were presented, but they also wanted to cast an actor who had little physical resemblance to any previous actor who had been cast as Bond. The producers ended up going with Daniel Craig, a blonde actor who had previously gotten noticed thanks to his starring turn in the action thriller Layer Cake. Daniel debuted as James Bond in Casino Royale and has starred in five films as the character. His most recent turn was in the just-released No Time to Die, and the film is fully intended to be the last in the franchise to feature the actor. The film has been received positively, and fans are anxious to see who's going to play James Bond next. No Time to Die featured a new face in the role of 007, but only because the code name had been given to another agent. The actor who is truly going to replace Daniel Craig has yet to be announced. Many have speculated who might be a good candidate, with Idris Elba being one of the most common names thrown around. Idris has claimed he has no interest in playing the character. Another actor often mentioned is Tom Hardy, who previously replaced Mel Gibson in the role of Mad Max for Mad Max Fury Road. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share who your favorite all-time James Bond is. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.